Okay. So we have reached our message. <laughs> yeah, I kind of tried to check if you guys were paying attention and mixed up the order of the program. <laughs> Next time, known to have a quiet demeanor, our speaker today has no reservations in expressing herself with a mere dose of a few words. She couples this with a captivating smile and a heart of gold, always willing to help regardless of the request. <clears throat> with an undoubtedly bright future after high school, yes, a high school student, please join me in inviting Safina Brand to the podium. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. <laughs> welcome to another beautiful Sunday morning here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, and a special welcome to those who have joined us on the World Wide Web. My talk today is entitled Manifesting Abundance. Speaking of which, have you guys enjoyed the rain yesterday? Yes. The grass is green, the flowers and the trees seem fresh and bright. Everything seems to be going. Can you imagine the rain? Abundance indeed. I have never really thought of myself as someone living an abundant life. So when I was told that I would give the message on abundance, I was nervous because I wasn't sure how I would deliver this message or how I would approach it. So I really had to evaluate and ask myself a couple of questions, which I think you should try too. What is abundance to you? How can I manifest abundance? And what is limiting me from manifesting abundance? These are my results. Abundance is free flowing love, happiness, joy, success, prosperity, and every and anything that is positive in life. And the manifestation of abundance depends on you. It depends on me. Our beliefs, our thoughts, our memories, self-worthiness are all aspects which create barriers to receiving abundance. It is up to you and me to remove the beliefs which limit us from manifesting abundance. I've recently learned that whichever way you want to experience abundance, whether it be in success, love, or prosperity, the universe will not bring it to you until you are ready to receive or accept it. And there are some of us who may think that we are ready to receive it, and we believe that we are ready to accept it, but we don't show it, or we don't work towards it. As much as believing in something, or believing that you can do something is very important, if we don't work in sync with that belief, then how, do, how can we expect to see the results? It is like in my case, I believe that I can ace my mock exams in January. Yes. <laughs> Let's say for all of December I waste my time. I watch TV, I sleep, I lie with friends, and probably pick up my book once for the whole Christmas holiday. Am I really going to ace that exam? I don't think so. Why is that? Because I am simply not ready to receive it. I believe I am ready, but I'm not working towards it. I'm not preparing myself to achieve those goals. Therefore, I am not ready. There are, some of, there are some cases where it's the other way around, where we work towards achieving abundance in any aspect, but we don't necessarily believe that we can manifest this abundance. And for this, I'm going to use health as an example. Let's say there is someone who wants to be abundant in health. This person works towards being healthy eats healthier foods, starts exercising, and basically does activities that are good for you. But this person doesn't believe it's going to make a difference. They don't think that they're doing the right things to help them get to the healthier stage. Is this person going to experience health in abundance? They may be healthier, but not in abundance. And also, if you are doing something and you don't believe that what you are doing is making a difference, you may eventually give up. 
So yes, believing is very important when manifesting abundance, but you also have to work towards it for the universe to bring it to you. So I decided to look at abundance in three different aspects to help me find a better understanding of the law under which abundance works. And you may take these as examples to which you can apply to any aspect of your life which you wish to see abundance. So we'll start with success. To be successful, you must first believe in you. One simply cannot accomplish abundance if they have negative thoughts and beliefs. Therefore, to be abundant in success, you must believe that you are already successful. You must then strive to achieve even greater things. We are created in the image of God, who is, abund who is abundant, making each and every one of us created abundantly. You must take advantage of your opportunities with positive attitudes, set your goals, and work towards achieving them. There are many different ways in which someone can express success, whether it be academically, career-wise, spiritually, etc. However, the same law applies for each aspect. Someone who is successful is someone who is sure of themselves, sure of what they want to achieve, certain of the results they would get based on their understanding. Someone who believes in failure has created a barrier which hinders them from being successful. All thoughts of failure must be erased and positive thoughts of achievement must take their place. Love. Love is an essence, is an essence which is and cannot be explained. God is love, and as we are created in the image of the Supreme, we are love. But then how can we manifest love in abundance? The most important thing you need to do is to learn to love yourself. It is nearly impossible for one to give or receive love if they have not learned to love themselves. You must also learn to express love with others. One of my understandings of the law of abundance is what you put into the universe you will receive. So, if you want to be abundant in friends, be friendly. It's the same principle with love. If you want to experience love in abundance, express love towards others and keep a positive mind. Love is about enjoying all relationships. And we hinder ourselves from this experience when we close our hearts. This can occur from the fear of rejection or the fear of losing our, our loved ones. It is then again the negative thoughts and memories which limit us from experience love in abundance. As this is unhealthy, it is our job to practice positive thinking and open up our hearts and experience that flow of love. Happiness. Your happiness also begins with you. It is your job to find activities that you enjoy and surround yourself with positive people. You must find barriers that hinder you from experiencing true happiness and remove them from your life. You must also remember to relax for a while and appreciate your surroundings. One can experience more, hap more happiness simply through expressing and living happiness. This practice will draw the flow of happiness to assist you in living an abundant life. So the law of manifesting abundance is pretty simple. One, you must believe in yourself and work towards achieving any and everything. Two, you must always keep a positive attitude to experience positive things. And three, you must practice all good things you want to experience in life. I will now ask you to join me in a meditation I found in the Ernest Holmes, The Science of Mind, entitled, Abundance is My Inheritance. I'm going to ask you all to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and center yourselves as I begin. Abundance is mine. I cannot be deprived of my supply. The trees do not lack for leaves, 
nor do the flowers fail to bloom. Am I not as important as they? Consider the, li the lilies of the field. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet, Solomon in his glory was not arrayed as one of these. I look at the lavish wastefulness of nature and know that God intended me to be as abundantly supplied with everything that makes for beauty, well-being, progressive living, and happiness. I myself am to blame when these fruits of spirit fail to appear. Since I know the truth of my being, I will no longer hinder or retard my good from coming to me. I will expect and accept all that I need to make life happy and worthwhile. For I am a child of the spirit and every attribute of it, every attribute of good is my inheritance. Nothing but lack of faith can keep my good from me for I am one with the universal essence of life or spirit, and its substance will manifest in my experience as I believe. No longer will I go for my good, carrying only a diaper, carrying only a diaper to be filled. This day, as I turn to the Father within, I bring all the empty vessels, knowing they will be filled, and my abundance will become manifest, and so it is. Namaste.